I'm going to show you how to create a list uh, like this one. Um, and we are going to be using something called a repeating group and it is a special type of container for lists. So you will use it whenever you want to dynamically display a list of elements. For this example, we pretend we are running a website about beauty products. And uh, this is what we want to achieve. So uh, for this example, I created a special set of data. I created a beauty products data type. And this uh, data type has uh, five important fields, the category, the description, the image, the link, and the name. So uh, in order to display uh, this uh, repeating group, you need to add a new page. Let's add a new page to create it from scratch. Add a new page, repeating group. Cool, create. Okay, uh, so under container, you'll choose repeating group and you'll just draw it on the page. Um, okay, so you will see you need uh, in the property editor to choose a type of content. So um, here the type of content is going to be beauty products because the elements we want to display are relative to uh, the data type beauty products. So let's choose this. And then you can see there is a data source. And here we want to show uh, the full list of our beauty products that we have in the database. So let's click and we'll choose uh, do a search for. Um, and so basically uh, this function is going to search in the database for what we will tell the function to search. So the type, we are going to be looking for beauty products. If you want to uh, display all the beauty products in the database, you don't need to do anything more, like they search for beauty products, type beauty products. So that's it. Um, if you want to add a new constraint, you can. For example, if you want to only display the beauty products of a certain category, you could click on add a new constraint and choose, for example, category uh, equal uh, toner, for example. Oh, sorry. This is it. So you could just write toner and this would uh, only display uh, the products of this category. But for now, let's delete this. We want all beauty products. Okay. Um, the layout style, uh, basically, so vertical scrolling, it means that uh, you will have four rows and one column. And if you have more elements than four, you will have a little scroll down, um, a little, sorry, a little, uh, yes, a little scroll bar to see all your data. But we'll uh, come back to this later. Um, now, Okay, now this is that this is done, we want to add elements uh, in each cell. Okay, so let's add elements in each cell to have the same results as this. So first, we want the category to, to be displayed. So we'll just choose text and draw it in the first cell. Um, so as you can see, whatever I draw in the first cell is going, is going to be reproduced in all cells. So you just need to, uh, to organize the first cell and it will be uh, perfect everywhere. Okay, so we'll need to use uh, dy dynamic data. Click on insert dynamic data. And here, uh, the first uh, proposition is the, the one you need to choose. Here we can see, current cells, beauty products. So you choose this and it will be the current cell beauty products category. So it means that here we, we said 
we want um, you to search for beauty products and basically to populate uh, each cell with a different beauty product. And here, inside the first cell, we are saying, for this cell, we want you to display this cell's uh, category. And you're going to copy and paste this. And we also want the product's name. And we also want the product's description. Perfect. So you can play, of course, with the look here. So maybe for the V category, we wanted to have uh, something like this. So let's remove style. And let's add a background. Okay, perfect. And let's make it like this. Okay. Uh, we also need uh, to display uh, the product image. So it's very similar to the text. So let's just draw it in the first cell. And here we have dynamic image, we'll also choose. It's our dynamic data, current cells, beauty products, image. That's it. And uh, same for the button, so we'll choose a button, okay. Don't mind like the design, it's really more to show you the functionality, it's really not about design. It's not very pretty, but it's really just to explain you how a repeating group uh, works. So let's say learn more on the button. Now we have one last uh, thing to edit. So. For the button, we cannot um, choose what it will do on the design page. We need to go in the workflow page um, as it is like a trigger. So let's click on start edit workflow. And uh, here we want the user to go to an external website. So let's choose open an external website. And in destination, you can choose insert dynamic data and it's the same as for the text, current sales beauty products, and here it is link. Uh, note that if you wanted to go to an internal page, you could just like click on, uh, sorry, page, go to page, and here you can choose one of your internal page. Okay, let's delete this and let's preview our repeating group. Nice, so we have what we wanted, uh, a, a list of products with the category, the product name, the description, an image and a link. And if you click on the button, you will go on the link. So, so that was a simple example for a repeating group.